Hi, good morning. Uh, we are working on religion and ethics, and this is the fifth session. Uh, we want to work on the, this work, and um, what we are supposed to do in this work, uh, especially we want to just take a look. Uh, what, what about the, you know, church? So what the churches can do for, in this uh, world. And you can find the sun that takes to be uh, supposed to keep. Um, the love of God and the decay of the world, that's right. Um, it's kind of, you know, amazing how, how come this world is making all kinds of dirty stuff every day, every single hour. And, um, well, the history says we, you know, we are believing um, that people are good in the beginning, and I'm, I'm not the, I'm not talking about the in the beginning, the what the Genesis says, uh, but uh, we are born as good, and we are corrupted uh, as time passes because this world is corrupted. Well, or some people are claiming that we uh, we have nature sin in us, so we are born uh, to be bad. Well, I don't know, but the latter can be more persuasive because people are going crazy. Um, sometimes it. You know, I'm thinking it's pretty hard to stop them. And even good people are making uh, evil things sometimes because they, they don't understand why or they just go crazy sometimes. Well, there are many things that we can consider and people are uh, you know, doing all kinds of, you know, wonderfully dirty stuff every day. The world, of, the world of comforts before the fall. Uh, before the fall, people were great and they were peaceful uh, in Eden. Um, so they didn't have any problem with God, but, uh, and they enjoyed the nature and they uh, just took care of the all kind of trees and animals and uh, water and something like that. So they didn't have anything to pollute uh, the nature at all. Because they didn't, I mean, Adam and Eve, they didn't use any uh, fossil fuels or something like that. Maybe they just, you know, burped once in a while and farted once in a while. Uh, well, I think that's all. And they just breathe and they consume the oxygen and breathe out uh, um, something else. Um, well, I think that is the most. And they just pee and poop and, well, I think that's all. But they're gonna just return to the nature and they were, they were only good people, so they didn't mess this culture, I mean, this world much. Um, and they didn't harm the animals. They just pick some fruits and grains uh, in the field. I think I, I don't know, maybe they catch some fish and ate it, or that's all. But the knowledge of God, knowledge of good and evil, the aim of all ethical reflection, because that's the, that's the only, only, that's the only law. Okay, do not eat the fruit, the fruit of tree of knowledge. I think that's the only one. Isn't it easy? There's only one law. Do not eat the fruit and that's it. You can do it. Everything you want, but the tree. So simple. 
how many laws and you know cause we have in our lives tons of laws and cause in our lives you know when i just drove to here from my house it was kind of 15 or 15 minutes driving i think but in the meantime, I had to follow all kinds of calls, you know, with and without knowing uh, those calls. Green lights, you can go. Red lights, you can stop. What if I don't go on green lights? I'm going to violate the law too. Because I'm supposed to go on green lights if I stop there on green lights, I'm blocking all kind of all cars behind me, and without any problems, so I cannot stop on green lights. What if I just go on red lights? Well, there are so many calls in the meantime, you know, changing the lanes, and um, what if I just sh I don't, but <laughs> what if I shoot? Um, I was driving, that's violating the codes, and that's going to be a felony, not misdemeanor, okay? Um, so there is only one law, one law they were supposed to keep. I have tons of laws and codes. So when you violate that, you are violating the ethics too, because all laws have their, it, you know, their own ethics. Because law is kind of, law, laws are minimums. Laws are minimums. We are supposed to make the laws as less as we can. Because when we maximize the laws, our freedom can be limited. So we, when, when we make laws, we, we are trying to make the least laws we need. And, and those laws are showing that uh, what kind of ethics we have. We don't want to kill others. That's the, you know, that's the law. We, that's the ethics. You know, we are not supposed to kill others because we are all human beings, and we want to just respect. We want to respect our, uh, you know, others, others' lives. So that is that. There was, only, there was only one law. Already the impossibility of knowledge of good and evil and Christian ethics discerns of falling away uh, from the origin. Um, uh, since, since Adam and Eve went, you know, broke the law, they had to lead the Eden, and they broke the relationship with God, and they broke the relationship with the nature also. So there is a far from the origin. So we have to remember, especially Christians have to remember that we want to just go back to the origin, you know, peaceful relationship with our, with our God, the Father, and the peaceful relationship with the nature. How come, you know, how many conflicts, how many problems do human beings produce in, you know, in less, especially in the past 50 years or 70 or 100 years or 200 years? Because we just ruined all natures. We made all kind of pollutions, air pollution, water pollution, and dirt pollution, and the sky. And Arctic, especially the North Arctic, and ice, ice folks are melting down, 
And then we are suffering from the nature because we, we mess. So the going back to the origin is must be the thing we have to consider. When it, his origin knows only one thing, God. So knowing God is very important. Now how are we going to know who the God is? Our Creator and our Father, that's what Christians are doing. How we can know God? Knowing God is that important. Adam ate the fruit of knowledge because he didn't understand who God is. He remembered, he knew, he, he knew that he was not supposed to eat the fruit because God ordered not to eat it. But Adam, even though he knew God and he knew the law, only the law without he broke it because he didn't understand who God is and he didn't know. I mean, he knew because God, God told Adam, when you, gonna, when you eat it, you're going to die. You eat it, you die. That's what God said. But Adam chose to die. That was his sin. He knew it and he broke it. That was not a mistake. If you don't know it and you did it, that's a mistake. You knew it, you accidentally did it without noticing it, that's a mistake. But you knew it, you did you Broke it? That's not a mistake. Man and his origin knows only one thing God. It is only in the unity of his knowledge of God that he knows of other men, of things, and of himself. And he knows all things only in God and God in all things. Because he, he could know to know trees, birds, animals, and natures, because through God, through only through God, because those are created by God. I make it, I know it. God in all things, all things, He created all things. So, in all things, he knew God. Last, last session, I just went, you know, mentioned, with, uh, mentioned about the chair, but what if somebody made this chair? That chair must be for sitting straight, okay? But what about this chair? That that city, that chair is a full line, almost a half line down, almost like that, way. Right? What if what about you know what about it's so far, you know? This chair is so what's so called the sofa is very pushy, pushy. And then that is for taking a rest, you know, like a lazy dog. So when you see those creatures, you know, you know, you know why, why the builders, why the carpenters, or, you know, chair makers intended, right? Uh, when you see a bird, I don't know how to, you know, I don't know. Let's say this is a bird. And this bird birds have wings. Then so God designed, God created, designed and created birds so they can fly, right? So wings are for flying. I don't have any wings, 
Okay? So I'm not designed to fly. But I can use you know, use a plane to fly without the plane or anything else with wings. I cannot fly. So when we see those things, creatures, we can understand why God created those things. He knows himself now as something apart from God. Because Adam you know, was separated from God, now he had had to understand himself without his creator. Then, you know, he could imagine this and that. He had to live without God, the creator, the original designer and creator. Outside now, and this means that he now knows only himself and no longer knows God at all because his relationship got broken by himself. That's why people are corrupting. That's why so called the fall. That's why so called the fall. means drop down. Instead of knowing himself in the original God, he must not know himself as an origin. God was the creator. Now human being and Adam got separated from the origin, the co-creator. So he had to do by himself, without God, the creator and the origin, no designer. He had to create, you know, and make rules for this and that. If that, if that just matched to God's will, it's going to be okay, but what if? Because he got already four. So what he's doing is far from the creator and the original designer, the God. So what he makes is producing, it produces is something different from what God you know, designed. And what God created. That's why people are spoiling the earth, spoiling all kinds of things. Originally, man was made in the image of God, but now his likeness to God is a stolen one. As the image of God, man draws his life entirely from his origin in God, but the man who has become like God has forgotten how he was at his origin and has made himself his own creator and judge. So when God created people, Adam, he and you know the triune God, the Trinity, God the Father, you know, the Jesus, Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, they just decided to, and they are totally agreed to make people, human beings with his image. It's not it's not saying that God looks like this two hands and two legs. No, that's image. Image. 
God didn't copy himself and he made human being know, but he just he just thought he's gonna make people with his image. Image is something different, right? But because of fall, because of fall, people lost the, the, the image of God. Imago Dei, right? And then knows good and evil against God, against his origin, because we fall, okay, we are fallen, so we lose God's image, so we make our own cause and laws, and if we and we don't follow God's laws. We don't follow and keep the image of God. We, we, what we said, this is good, this is evil, can be totally different what God really has. Godless and of his own choice, Understanding himself according to his own contrary possibilities. And he is cut off from the unifying, reconciling life in God, and is delivered over to death. When his life is now this union with God, with man, with things, and with himself. You violated only one law, you are separated. You can't keep the union with God because God is good and you are evil. And you are sinners. We all are sinners, so we cannot get any union with God. So we couldn't get union through Jesus Christ, because He just connected and covered the relationship between God and us, human beings. So we there, we could we can get the union with God. Right? Chain. Instead of seeing God, man sees himself. So before the fall, you know, Adam and Eve, they used to meet God often. Maybe once a day, I don't know. And now they cannot, they, they couldn't see God because they were fallen and they were kicked out from the Eden, the Garden of Eden. And they couldn't see God but themselves. When you, when you don't see your father parents and you are the, you are the how, you know, the head of the household and you can choose whatever you want without any voice from your parents, the same thing. And man perceives himself in his disunion with God and with a man. Because man's relationship with God broken, the relationship between people got broken also. That's why Adam blamed Hawa, and Hawa, I mean evil, evil blamed the serpent. They blamed each other, and we are blaming each other too. And we, we cannot agree on these and those because we have our own standard, our own laws, our own culture, our own thoughts. So those, those, those can be different. God is there, people are here, 
when 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 before the fall they had a relationship okay but after the fall because the relationship is broken and you know the, these relationships are broken and their relationships are broken too because they this this person has it you know his or her own law and this person has his or her own law so they can comfort they can have comfort he perceives that he's naked lacking the protection the covering which God and his fellow men afford him why the shame lack of something because the relationship got broken with God, they, those people, you know, realize that they are naked, which means they don't have any protection, lack of something. They didn't, they didn't feel that they didn't know it because they didn't have any lacks, lackings. The covering of shame conceals everything nascent that proceeds from man's yearning. For the for the repayment of the unity which he has lost, the shame can be overcome only when the original unity is restored. The shame can be recorded, overcome when the original unity with God is restored. So restoring is the core things in the Bible. And that's why Jesus came down to the earth for recovering, for the recovering. The relationship between God and people. So people can recover the relationship with others and the nature we are living in. There are so many Christians on this earth, but how come we don't see any particular, particular recoveries? Well, there are lots of recoveries. The broke, you know, all the broken relationships between, you know, with God and others and nature. So lots of Christians feeling and thinking and doing that they have to they have to recover the relationships shame and conscience in shame man is reminded of his disunion with God and with other men and conscience is the origin of a man's disunion with himself And, and so they, when we don't, when I have my own laws, that is for fulfilling my pleasure and happiness, I can harm others and I can kill others because for myself. But I realize that the kind of activities in, are not proper because I believe in God and I have conscience well I'm not supposed to do it because God doesn't like it so I have no problem when I make my own laws but once I realize that God doesn't God wants me to do something else what I like what I used to do, that means that triggers me that I can, I have my conscience, right? I had no problem with that before, but, but God, I just, you know, had just got some recovered relationship with God. 
and that changes to me. And I know I, I have different concepts. Conscience is that must be part of the image of God. Okay. So conscience is satisfied when the prohibition is not disobeyed. Yeah. There is no positive commandment. That means that you are supposed to do it. Okay? So, for example, killing, that's a prohibition, right? Do not kill. And that is satisfied. Okay? And conscience is satisfied. There is no positive comment. Do this, do this, do this. Well, that can be part of the conscience also, I think. But, you just don't do what you are not supposed to do. Then, uh, your conscience can be satisfied. Knowing of God and evil in this union with the origin, man begins to reflect upon himself. So when you have you have recovered, when you recover the relationship with God, and you can know what the good and evil through God, not you don't decide, you know, good and evil by yourself. You just decide good and evil through God. And then we need to reflect upon himself. Then you can know, and then you can know, you know, who you are. You don't have to think about it when you don't have God. And you just keep the broken relationship with God. You don't have to think about it. But you, you recovered the relationship with God and you can think about yourself in the relationship with God. His life is now his understanding of himself. Where is that the origin? It was his knowledge of God. So life is now his understanding of himself. Where is that the original? It was that knowledge of God. All knowledge is now based upon self-knowledge. Knowing of good and evil in this union with the origin, man begins to reflect upon himself. Now, now in the disunion status, you just think about yourself only and you can decide what you want. So life is now his understanding of himself. So you know who you are without knowing God, without any relationship with God, the origin, then you can understand yourself as much as you want. Whereas at the origin it was his knowledge of God. So, there are huge differences between Christians and non-Christians. Christians think and think of themselves as the, you know, in, in, in the relationship with God. And non-Christians, they don't care about God. They don't care about Christ. They don't care the origin. Even they deny God is not the creator, and God is not the origin, and God is not, you know, their father. No. So they don't care. Because they don't care, they don't have any relationship with God, and they don't have to consider what God thinks, what God, what God wants. What God is doing, they don't care. 
So, the world always recovers the unity. The Pisces, only the knowledge of good and evil has come to be of importance in his entire life. Because the Pisces just studied the law. You know, at the time, their laws, their, their laws are just, you know, that's uh, Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. No. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The final books are their laws. So they uh, focus, they were focused on what is right and wrong on their basis, on the on the basis of their knowledges of the final books. Judge himself and others severely to the honor of God. So their main focus and goal is, you know, is to judge what is right or wrong. Failing to take every factor into account in each of the, the uh, innumerable cases of conflict, making sins against the knowledge of good and evil. He has to put all others in his examining. Same to Jesus. Jesus does not allow himself to be drawn in, into a single one of these conflicts and decisions. Well, even the Son of God, and he, ha he has endless relationship with God, and He is, even he is united with his God. He never, he never claimed that he can do by himself whatever he wants. Because whenever he was feeling that he had had to make a decision or something, he never failed to uh, talk with his father, the God. That's the biggest difference between Jesus and us. And failing to, I mean, failing to take every factor into account in each of the innumerable cases of comfort, making sins against the knowledge of good and evil. And he has to put all others in his examining. Same to Jesus. And Jesus speaks with a complete freedom, which is not bounded by the law of logical alternatives. Heresy, this freedom necessarily appears as a negation of all order, all piety, and all belief. Judge not that ye be not judged. And Jesus then means what? Who is judging? God judges. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you don't you don't know what is good or evil. Yes, you know. Yes, you know. Uh, but that means that you have to remember God judges. And you use God's word, and you use God's will, and you know, when you judge, you have to know what God wants to do, and how God judges. Paris is, uh, Jesus demands that knowledge of good and evil be overcome. He demands unity with God. So when you have a unity with God, you don't have to worry about what is good or bad because you just follow God's decisions. You just follow what you judge what God judges. Heresy section is clearly a judgment of the other man 
all their works they do for to be seen of men. Heresy's action is not genuine action, for indeed the, the action which is intended to overcome the disunion of man and good and evil does not achieve this aim, but only aggravates uh, the, uni the disunion is still further. Proving ye are transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the will of God. So renew your mind. Don't, don't be, don't make yourself the judge, but to follow the judge's judgment and decision. And who the judge is? Our God, the Father. Walk as children of light, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. That is the only way of overcoming of the form of the fallen man. Christian self proving. For now is that Jesus Christ is within us when this name is spoken in its entirety. So, so how we can, I mean that's that's the only way of overcoming the form of the fallen man, what? Walk as children of the light. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And think about so whenever we just face any questions and if we just wonder if this is right or wrong, and you just think about what God thinks, what, what God wants. That is walking with God. When you walk with God, you want to ask God, you know, lots of questions. God, is, is this right? God, is this wrong? God, am I supposed to do this? Am I, am I not supposed to do this or something? And you have to and you will ask, and God will teach you. God will teach you. No occasion. Right? Doing only appropriate conduct of a man before God is a doing of his will. So standing in front of God, and you we live with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is in us already. As soon as we confess our sins and accept Jesus as our Savior, the Holy Spirit is in us. Which means that, which means that we are, God is with us. God is with us. Okay? So, we want to know what God wants us to do, and we just do what God wants us to do. If we don't know it, or if we, we don't want to know it, and we can make all kinds of things wrong. Okay, that's the problem. But even Christians, even Christians don't, don't do this, don't practice that. That's why they keep on doing wrong and they don't know it, what they are doing. And they don't care sometimes or they ignore what they are doing because they ignore God. That is despising God. Only in doing can there be submission to the will of God. Yes. When God wants wants us to when God wants us to just give a cup of water to the person who is who, who is thirsty, and you can just say, Yes, I will, and you don't give any water to the person. You are not submitting to God. 
only doing what you are doing, you know, only you can say you are submitting to God by what you are doing. Now everyone, and doing verses to judge. If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. So when we only when we judge what God judges, then we can make good judgments. And we can follow what God judges. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he had he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Lord, Lord, I believe you, I believe you, I worship you, I'm a Christian, but you don't do anything right, anything what God wants you to do, and <laughs> you are not a Christian. You don't, you don't go to heaven. That's what Jesus is saying. Love. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 3 says, God is love. And only he who know God know what love is. Love is the revelation of God. What is love? Love is the reconciliation of a man with God in Jesus Christ, the, the disunion of a man with God, with other men, with the world and with themselves. Is yet his own end. So what is love? What is love? It's reconciliation of man with God. You love your God, you want to reconcile, you know, you want to reconcile with God. You love your neighbor, you want to reconcile with your neighbor. Jesus Christ, the, 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 the disunion of a man with God, with other men, with the world, and with themselves, is in a man. So that's, what about the church and the world? The church experienced, and church is experiencing this and that, and Jesus the most precious one in Christianity, everything must return to Him. So in the Christianity, in the churches, you know, Jesus must be in the center of the churches. If you sit in the middle of the church, that's not the church at all. And the church doesn't like you. You're not like him. And Jesus will judge you because you are the head, not Jesus. The full and exclusive claim of Christ. The limits of membership in himself, he that is not against us is for us. And that is wider than his disciples who wish him to do or themselves do. Speaking the name of Jesus Christ. The exclusiveness of the membership in itself, he, amen. B, Christ and good people. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness and sake. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Well, so Christians are supposed to you know, be persecuted for the righteousness? Yes. If you sacrifice yourself for the evil, the bad, there is no reward at all. Maybe you'll have. But when you just when you just sacrifice yourself for the righteousness, And the kingdom of heaven is yours because God loves people. God loves those people, right? So some people are claiming that they are sacrificed so they are okay. And but what if those people just sacrifice themselves for the unrighteousness? We, you know, they can make those kind of mistakes because they decided good and good. Or, Good and evil, good and bad. They don't follow what God judges. 
but they just follow themselves. Which means they set their laws and they just follow their laws. And who can say they, they just follow their laws and that is okay? You can go on green lights, but, but what if some people just set their own you know, laws and codes that they are supposed to stop on green and go on red? And then they are okay because they just set their laws and they, they just kept their laws, right? Want to who in their mistaken anxiety to act lightly, seek to avoid any suffering for the sake of just good and true cause, ungenerous and narrowness. The publicans and the herods go into the kingdom of heaven before you. We experience the wicked found their way to Christ, the good remained removed from him. We experience the good who find their way back to Christ, the wicked obstinately uh, remain aloof from him. Christian belongs both to the wicked and to the good. He belongs to them both only as sinners. Both have fallen away from the origin. Okay, so closing the concept of good simply as a contrary of vicious, lawless, and scandals, as the opposite of public transgression of the moral law, as good in contrast to the public plan and health, good contains an extremely wide range of gradations. Extending from the purely external observance of good order to the most intimate self examination and character formation, and to personal self sacrifice for the most sublime human values. Protests against the virtuous self satisfaction, which by a convenient reveals of the gospel, Consider the being good simply as preliminary to being Christian and which is supposed to that the accent from being good to being Christian could be accomplished more or less without a break. So understanding God why is the first step that uh, we can be ethical people. Because without knowing God, the Creator, we don't know the orders. We don't know the rights and goods and good and bad. Because He is the Creator and He said those things, and we can, our own good and bad, and that can be corrupted without the relationship with God. So we better, we better just, we, we rather ch just follow God's law and cause as much as we can, rather than we just set our laws and follow our laws and we, we just claim that we are right. Because we are fallen and we are corrupt, we have a sin in our natures. Um, even though our state has changed from the son of evil to the son of God, but we still have to work on the only way for the sanctification, so we need to be careful what we are supposed to do, what we are doing. Okay, so that's the ethics we had a look at. Right? So that's all today, and see you next time.